So, I was scrolling through Pinterest a few weeks ago, as I do almost every day at this point, actually doing research for another video, when I ran across this portrait. I was immediately mesmerized, and literally 15 seconds later, I ran across this portrait. Completely different portrait, basically the same piece of clothing, and I thought that was the costuming gods calling down to me, telling me that this was too much of a coincidence and I needed to make this bodice immediately. A little bit of background on these portraits and what I could find on this piece of clothing. The first portrait I saw was by, hold on, oh, am I not gonna be able to pronounce, I'm really bad at pronouncing names, you know what, visual. The first portrait I saw was by this painter and was called this name, <laughs> it was painted in the year 1849 and then the second portrait I saw was by this painter was titled this name and was painted in 1839. Sorry that I'm bad at pronouncing things but trust me I'm saving your ears some torture. I was having a bit of an issue finding any information on what specifically this bodice was called until I finally ran across a blog post by the Dreamstress talking about this item of clothing this bodice called several things sometimes called a Swiss waist or a Swiss belt or a corselet. From the best that I can remember, depending on the time of the century, it was called different things. I would highly recommend going and reading that blog post. I am doing it no favors by trying to explain it. And it was a very informative read after spending several minutes being able to find absolutely nothing on this piece. Some of them apparently did have shoulder pieces. I wasn't able to find really any other pieces that have this kind of shoulder, I don't even know what to call this, it's like shoulder piece, epaulette-esque words, I don't know, but I am entranced and I need to make it and put it on my body stat. Now I did change a couple of things about the pattern just to make it easier for me to wear and put it on myself, but that's for later in the video. If you have any more information on these bodices, please put them down below. I am so interested and I want to know more, but anyway. Let me show you how I made this. It's hot up here and I can't turn on the air for sound reasons. Oh, that's my dog. I thought before I got started, I would just kind of try to break this down to where I could make a little bit more sense out of it. So I put both photos into Photoshop and let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. First things first, I kind of want to just talk about the similarities between these two. My assumption, there's one of two things that this could be. Either one, one of these is a study of the other, and then two, it could be, I'm not quite sure when mass-produced clothing started to really be a thing. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to research that. It could just be that this is a mass-produced piece of clothing. Let's start with the eerie similarities that probably have a very boring explanation. So on this one, little pinkish flower. Also on this one, little pinkish flower. And they're in the same spot <laughs> on the bodice. There is this triangle of maybe it's embroidery, maybe it's like the base fabric that all this is attached to peeking through. I really like this. I do think I might just either one, cover it, or two, leave it bare, like have the bare skin showing through because I think that'd be really pretty. Three, this, whatever this jewelry thing is that's happening, and I absolutely love it. Let's just start breaking this down and maybe talking about some of the differences and maybe what I want to do between those two differences. So here we have like, <laughs> The only thing I could think of is like a Garfield <laughs> opening, like seriously, or like Goofy or something, put two eyeballs here and you've got a cartoon character circa 1950. I don't really love that as much as the straight across that we have on this side. However, I might do straight across on the top and then do a little bit of this curve here because this one i see this little dip right here but i don't think that's purposeful i think that's just how the fabric falls so that might be what i do like do straight across and then a little curve and then what i see on both of these like this one's a little bit blurrier so i don't know if this is just me not having a clear photo but i only see a center front seam hold on let me make a prettier line <laughs> and what i'm assuming to be side seams somewhere over here and on this one as well, which I just don't know if that's even possible. 
with something that is so structured, like maybe you could use some buckram or horsehair to make this more sturdy, but I feel like you need some kind of princess seam here, at least, if not like three sections here. I'm assuming that this was just like artists not knowing how clothing is put together, which that's not their job. They don't have to know how it's put together, but that's my assumption. That's why these seams aren't there. These little areas on this neck shoulder piece. Okay, let me see what, I see a center front here on the neck, a little neck piece, so this will be one. I see this piece here, that's two. And then I see this piece that might come from the back, that's three. And then I see this kind of shoulder part here, so that's four pieces for the front. And I think I see it over here as well, from what I can tell, like I see this little neck piece, see this piece and then over here i see this little tiny thing here and something here so very similar if not the same i feel like the back is something like this a thing that is different about the pattern that i have that you'll see in a second is it's much more of a late 19th century inspired corset goes down on the hips and i'm definitely going to have to shorten it this one has a bit more of a curve and this one's a lot more straight and goes much farther down on the skirt. This almost feels like 17th century inspired to me, like Baroque almost, um, whereas this one definitely feels more Victorian, which I just find interesting. I don't quite know why uh, I get those vibes. Now that we've done this and broken it down, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense to me so I can move on to the mock-up. Cool. The first step was to create a mock-up so I could make the needed changes. I usually like being lazy and either just going for it or drafting my own pattern and just going straight to the final fabric, but since I was making changes to a corset pattern I never tried before, I thought a mock-up might be nice. Since I had no idea how this pattern would fit me, I gave just a bit of extra room to each piece. I added upper back sections to my back pieces and started sewing. I didn't end up needing to add that much space to the bodice, so I ended up just having to trim down some of those seams. Once it fit me correctly, I needed to make the stylistic changes to the bodice. Once I had those basic lines down, I went in with a marker and solidified those changes and straightened out any wonky lines. Then I patterned out the shoulder pieces by starting with a base. then freehanding the four different pieces with a triangular hole in the middle.
I put on my mock-up one final time, cut out those four shoulder pieces, and it was time to move on to cutting out the actual fabric. I originally thought that because the nap on the velvet was so short, there wouldn't necessarily be a direction to the velvet, and I could just lay out my pieces however I needed to. However, I quickly discovered that was not true. I picked the direction that showed more of the darker jewel tones in the fabric and planned out my pattern pieces accordingly. If you were wondering why I had made all those markings on my mock-up, it was because I fully intended on using those as my pattern. Yes, this is not what you should do, but I wanted to fast track this project. It is best practice to transfer your mock-up to paper. The nice thing about this though, is that the velvet and the muslin had a lot of nice friction. And so I didn't even have to pin it. I could just go in and cut it out. After adding interfacing to all the bodice pieces, I started putting my bodice together. One thing I learned about velvet is that even though the muslin and the velvet worked great together, when you put velvet to velvet, it tends to slip. So that was a bit difficult to deal with, but by far not the worst fabric I've ever had to deal with in my time. <laughs> Next was to cut out the shoulder pieces. I had to fix how many to cut out on each piece. It should have been four instead of two because it's gonna be self-lined. I sewed three out of four sides on each shape, tapered off any corners, and cut out any extra fabric on the curves to get rid of extra bulk, and turned those pieces right side out again. I then hand stitched the pieces together so there would be very little stitching showing on the outside. Going off of the paintings, I didn't want any extra stitching showing on the outside for the boning, so I instead attached it to my lining, which fun fact was from my old sheets that I accidentally ripped a humongous hole into. This ensures that there's as little stitching as possible showing on the outside of the garment. Then it was time to put all the layers of the bodice together. So I started with the velvet, then the lining, then wait, no, that's not right. Uh, it's the outer velvet layer, then the velvet facing, then finally the lining, so that the lining is sandwiched between the outer layer and the facing. There we go. Once they were all attached, now you can have a nice calming shot of me hand stitching the other side of the facing to the lining, making sure that everything on the inside looks nice and pretty, which is something I don't normally do, but I just felt like this piece was super special, so it deserved it. The final steps were to sandwich the shoulder pieces into the back piece's shoulders and add hook and eye tape to the center front. This piece is done and just as a reminder, here's my inspiration image. And here is the final bodice. Okay, it's not perfect. I wasn't able to meet the two here perfectly. There's a little bit of difference right here. Also decided to not bone the center front, which I think at this point actually might have been a mistake, but it still looks good. I am so proud. Okay, one change of the uh, like five other changes that I made that I might not have mentioned up to this point is I did hook and eye tape down the center front. I think historically it was laced down the back. This is just a little bit more easier for me just day to day. I cannot wait 
to put this with like a modern outfit. Stay tuned for that on my shorts. I will definitely be putting it up there. Love the green velvet that's like almost black. This is the perfect color for what I wanted. That is going to be it for me this week. If you had fun watching and would like to see more from me, be sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I hope to see you back here next time. Bye. I wanna try to see if I can Photoshop myself into the portrait. <laughs> oh, this is hard. Wait, more skirt. Do anything like this.